And let's go to Temecula, to the wine capital of Southern California. How are you doing, John? Uh, doing great, Dr. Bob. What's your question for us today? Well, I'd like to learn the difference between uh, Islam and radical Islam. I've heard so much about, uh, about the news and about how radical Islam supposedly doesn't represent uh, regular Islam, and that uh, I wanted to learn more about it. Well, in my book, Winning the War Against Radical Islam, I give you an entire chapter where I document the following. In the field of comparative religions, you usually judge a religion by the teachings of the founder, not the absurd, contradictory activities of his disciples, particularly those who come a thousand years later or centuries later. So, for example, if I want to judge Christianity, I will look at the teachings of Jesus as given in the New Testament, and I find that he never sent out anyone to rape, to murder, to kill, to steal, etc. Matter of fact, every time his disciples attempted to use violence, he told them to stop. He gave the warning that his kingdom was a heavenly kingdom, and he did not have any soldiers in Christ's kingdom. Right. Now, and he, he even healed those that were injured. Yes. And now, if you want to judge Islam, you go to Muhammad as he is instructed in the Quran and then in the Hadiths. And that's why I give you a complete analysis of the Hadiths in both of my books. And I see someone's attempting to break into your car yeah. at this very moment. <laughs> that's down the street. Down the yeah. street. The reason right, why now, I was asking the question is because I understand that if you're an infidel, that uh, the Muslim uh, religion allows you to lie, cheat, steal, murder, rape, whatever, to, to an infidel. Yes. And I was just wondering if that's something that Muhammad taught. Yes, practice. he did. Matter of fact, in the Hadith, which is the official teachings of Muhammad, for example, a Muslim who kills a non-Muslim cannot be punished with capital punishment. He cannot be put to death for that. Because non-Muslims are less than human. They're only animals. They can be uh, hands. A Muslim and a radical Muslim, to me, I can't understand the difference. Uh, very, very simple. As a religion evolves, it embraces people who don't care a rat's behind about what the founder thought or said. So the majority of people in today, a billion and a half people, claim to be Christians. Yeah. Right. And the vast majority of them don't care what Jesus said or did. They're not interested. They are cultural Christians. Right. And uh, they say they are, but they go out into the stripper clubs and rob banks and on down the line. <laughs> Same thing with Buddhists and Hindus and Muslims. The majority of the world has to do with cultural religion. So the majority of Muslims are Muslim in name only. They are liberal. They do not uh, read the Quran. They don't go to the mosque. Uh, they really do not follow what Muhammad taught. So what President Bush has done is this. He has said the liberal, westernized, Christianized Muslim who doesn't care a rat's behind about Muhammad, he represents true Islam, whereas the radical Muslim doesn't. But see, the radical Muslim is reading what Muhammad taught, and he's saying, if Muhammad said it, that settles it, I believe it, and I'm going to do it. So Bush has it backwards. But if wow. you know anything about Bush's life, he's always had things backwards. <laughs> From his Yale days, drinking himself to blindness, the Yale, you know, the, the skull and crossbones and all the rest of that. So what the media has done is flip it so that the radical Muslims are considered the aberration, whereas it's the liberal Muslim who is you know, not a true follower. Same thing. Born-again Christians are the Christian fundamentalists. To be a fundamentalist Christian means you believe in the fundamentals of the faith. They are the true Christians. The majority of these liberal, nominal Christians, they're no more Christians than a dog.
So apply the same to Islam. Get a hold of that book, Winning the War. Go to our website, faithdefenders.com. You can take a look at it. Winning the War Against Radical Islam. Matter of fact, any of you listening today, um, you really ought to know the difference. And I give you ten arguments to destroy the liberal idea that all religions worship the same God. Did you know that's a fraud? It's a total fraud. It's a lie. It's idiocy. It's stupidity. It, it doesn't make any sense logically, philosophically. No way. Anyone who tells you all religions worship the same God is also saying that all people have the same dog. Because the word dog is used by a lot of people, and the word God is used by a lot of people, well, ipso facto, it's the same God and the same dog. Idiocy. Idiocy. That is what it is. Call 1-800-41-TRUTH, and for your gift of $20 or more to help us to that um, meet our radio bills, yeah. we'll send you the book, Winning the War Against Radical Islam. Call 1-800-41-TRUTH. That's 1-800-41 and the word truth. Let's go to your Belinda with Tom. Tom, you're on with Dr. Bob. Again, I was going to talk about the election. Uh, hey, that's good. The conservatives are eating themselves up. We've got uh, Tom. Then they've got to unite around the most electable, well, the most of them intelligent. Well, decide to exit stage left. Uh, any other conservatives who were part of the 135 uh, parade should exit. Well, I don't exit. think Arnold's really a conservative. Uh, he's uh, pro-death, you know. Uh, oh, I know, I know, I know. But and he pretends uh, to be. That's pretends why uh, McClintock are a more desirable candidate. Plus, McClintock has the technical and financial knowledge to solve the problems. Yes, he does. Uh, maybe Simon has some of this. But, but does uh, he have the cojones? What's that? Does Simon have the cojones? Yeah. And I think Tom McClintock has courage of steel. Yes. And he can take on uh, the democratic bureaucracy. Well, he knows the assembly. Yes, he That's knows right. them. He's been fighting them. And you see, anyone else getting in there, I think they're going to be eaten alive. Yeah. Well, eaten uh, alive. Uh, and of course, uh, Davis is shooting down uh, Bustamante. He's not going to give him any money, and uh, they're, they're, they're at odds, you know. Well, let's hope the big breast, of course, Bustamante, the big breasted man, will <laughs> not win. We well, have I'll enough. do everything I can to keep him from winning. That's right, and we've got to and there, tonight. And I don't want the Terminator either, because no, he doesn't have the technical knowledge, nor is he, uh, does he have the right positions on the social issues. Well, that's why Arnold is a rhino, a Republican in name only. That's right. He's a, uh, uh, a moderate Republican, as you say, or a left-wing Republican. He's a liberal. Face it, he married in with liberals. He sleeps with the liberal, Maybe and you know the eventually it's going to get in the back door. <laughs> That's right. Well, thank you so much for calling, Tom. Well, you have a pleasant and enjoyable evening, sir. All right, thank you. Me. You're listening to Bob Morey live.